A closer look this morning at a 60 Minutes investigation. Heroin is being called America's biggest drug epidemic. Heroin use in the past decade jumped more than 60 percent. The users are men and women across all incomes. Heroin-related overdoses nearly quadrupled. Correspondent Bill Whitaker went to the heartland. He met Ohio families seeing the impact. How did you respond when your daughters told you they were using heroin? Well, they first told me they were using the pills. And uh, how I found out they were using heroin was I came home from work one day, made dinner, and I was yelling for my youngest daughter to come for dinner, and she didn't. And I walked into her bedroom, and her boyfriend was shooting her up. You saw this? I saw it. What did you do? Dropped the plate of food. I dropped it. And I was hysterical. Tracy's daughter, Jenna, is 25 now. She knows she's lucky to be alive. In my addiction, I had been to rehab 17 times, and I'd been to jail six or seven times. So every time I went to jail, I got out, went to rehab, came home and relapsed, and then did it all over again. You overdosed as well? Mm hmm How many times? I only overdosed once, and I woke up in an ambulance. Mike DeWine is Ohio's attorney general. He showed, Bill, he showed Bill Whitaker how heroin is gripping his state from rural towns to wealthy suburbs. Welcome. Thank you. You call this an epidemic. It's the worst epidemic I've ever seen. I've been involved in law enforcement since the 1970s, and it's, it's so pervasive. It's in every part of Ohio. Uh, you know, we used to think of drug epidemics centering on cities. Uh, not true at all. Uh, the drug dealers are going where the money is, and that's the suburbs. Uh, and they're also, also in the rural areas. And what's the lure? I mean, in other words, why are so many people doing this? Because heroin is a scary drug. It's a scary drug. I, I, I don't really know. Uh, what I can tell you is when I was a county prosecuting attorney in the 1970s, uh, heroin was something that most people who were doing drugs wouldn't touch. Yeah, exactly. I would talk to them and, you, you know, relatively small county, you got to know people and you got to even know the drug dealers because we would arrest them. And you talk to them and say, hey, what do you do? And they'd, you know, list a whole bunch of crazy stuff that they were doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd say, what about heroin? Yeah. Hey, I'm not crazy to wine. I don't, that's those crazy people. Yeah, even the drug yeah. dealers are saying, I don't want yeah, to touch I that. I don't want to touch that. You, I won't you, do it. I wouldn't put that in my needle in my You've also arm. said, Mike, that, they, that they, uh, you cannot arrest your way out of this problem. What do you mean? And what should you do? Well, you know, the drug cartels are doing a great job in, in marketing this. Um, but um, I think most people in law enforcement today understand uh, and tell me, and I totally agree with them, we can't arrest our way out of the problem. Uh, that we want to do what we do in law enforcement. We think in Ohio we do a, a pretty, pretty good job. Uh, Attorney General, we try to help local law enforcement. But really, we need to focus a lot more on prevention and we need to focus on treatment. So here's one of the things that stunned me. Jenna Morrison, who we just saw, got addicted to heroin. But she says her addiction started with pain pills, opiates, that she was legally prescribed by a doctor. In how many cases are people that are hooked on heroin first prescribed opiates? Yeah, I would say about three-fourths. Uh, we don't really know the numbers. Yes. And, and, you know, we have made a major effort in Ohio. Uh, when Governor Kasich and I took office, we made a major effort to deal with the, that part of the opiate problem, the, the pain meds. We've taken the licenses of over 50 doctors in Ohio. So we've made some real progress in that area. And the, the goal is going to be to slow that down so that then they don't end up in, in, with heroin. And, and, and by the way, yeah. e either one, they can kill you. Yeah, and I they just do thought. Kill people. I just thought. And Jenna, Jenna's mother is a nurse and says in Bill Whitaker's piece, you know, we didn't prescribe this many pain pills when I, you know, 20 years ago. That that has changed, and we've got to look at that. I thought that was a real it, warning sign look, for parents. I, look, I, I have seen it with my own family and grandkids, where they go in for, uh, you know, wisdom tooth or something, and a whole bunch of pain okay. meds are prescribed, and you know. The idea is not to take any. If you can Mike, avoid it. Mike, three quarters of a billion pain pills were prescribed by doctors in Ohio alone. That's 65 pills for every man, woman, and child. Is that seems like a huge problem? You know, I, I think I think the one mom last night made made a point, a very very good point, that the pendulum was That's too fine. far the other way, where you know we weren't really treating as a society treating people's pain. Mm -hmm. uh, it flipped clear over here. 
we've got to bring it back to here. Yeah, but where was the outrage? People say, where was the outrage when it was a street drug, when it was only limited to a poor community or minority community? Now people are outraged and say we have to do something about it. What do you say? Do you think that was true? And what do you say about that, Mike? You're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, in the 60s and 70s, when I was a prosecutor, we looked at uh, society said those, you know, those are the just those people over there. They don't. Mm -hmm. They didn't think they could be us, mm -hmm. whatever us was. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. It was somebody else in another city, and it couldn't be. Now, it, it, you know, this epidemic cuts across every kind of line, geographical, but also by income. So. You know, anyone who's watching this or watched last night's 60-minute piece, which I thought was a, gr a great yeah. piece, uh, it's going to do a lot of good. Right. And anybody watching yeah. that, you know, it could be your child, it could be your grandchild, it could be in your community. And if you don't think you have a heroin problem, you're probably wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 23 people die of an overdose every week in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a low figure. We think wow. it's probably higher than that, actually. Thank you. And, and all the families that are shattered on Thank top you. of that. Yeah, thank you. Right. Very, Very important information this morning. Thank you, Mike Dorn.